happening, Rancho Palos Verdes, the 2023 countdown is on for the city's 50th anniversary. That's right, the community is in full celebration mode and we're excited to tell you all about the anniversary fun that you can join in on. Hello and thanks for joining us today. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And Maria, we have a fantastic show ahead. It's all about having fun in RPV in 2023. That's right, Liz, and you mentioned the city's 50th anniversary. And today joining us in studio is RPV's own deputy city manager, Karina Binales. And she is going to talk everything 50th anniversary from last September all the way till next September. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be nifty 50. That's right. All right. Um, also, it's whale watch season right now in Rancho Palos Verdes, and we are going to travel to the city's most popular spots to check out the whales and the city's famous tortoise. The whale and the tortoise. <laughs> Wait, does that sound like a children's book, Liz? I think it does. I think you have something going on over there. And speaking of children, we will check out classes being offered to kids and adults through RPV's own Recreation and Parks Department. It does a great job. I know. The, the classes They're are amazing. fantastic. We're going to yeah. talk about all the offerings. We're going to first have a quick break and come back. And this RPV party is going to get started. And we're going to be joined by RPV's Deputy City Manager, Karina Banales, when we return right Right here. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's so great to have here in studio Rancho Palos Verdes Deputy City Manager, Karina Banales. She is all things amazing and you are busy with the city's 50th anniversary. So thanks for having some time in your schedule to come join us and tell us about all the fun. Yes, it's <laughs> been so amazing since last September when we started the anniversary mm -hmm. event. So let's kind of go back for a minute and just talk about that first event leading all the way up until the big one in September. <laughs> Yeah, and thank you for having me. It's been amazing so far. We've hosted five fantastic events. But yeah, let's go back to what it was like um, pre-planning all these events. Um, we were very fortunate enough to have a city council that really wanted to celebrate every single month building up to the city's big birthday, yeah. the 5-0. And we did kick off this 50th anniversary celebration in September of 2022 and it was for the unveiling and renaming of the Civic Center. And now it's renamed to the Ken Dida Civic Center, our That's founding, right. one of our founding fathers mm -hmm. of Rancho Palos Verdes. That event was really spectacular. It was um, heartfelt. Um, it really drew a large group of community members that have been here prior to the city's incorporation and family members whose family members were part of carrying the torch and really fighting hard to what we have today, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful community and city. And, you know, having the Civic Center renamed to Ken Dida, um, it's, it's been very um, inspirational and like I mentioned, it's heartfelt and mm -hmm. it's genuine and it's great. And, and we've really been embracing the new name and, uh, you know, among staff and community members, it's now the Ken Dida Civic Center. So that kicked off the first month of the following 12 months of the 50th anniversary. Then we celebrated in October, the city's first, the inaugural event of the Harvest Festival. Now everyone thinks, well, we've had a Harvest Festival, haven't we, in the past? Nope. We've had a trunk or treat. That's right. <laughs> which has separated the, um, the Harvest Festival with previous events is that not only did we have the trunk or treats, which is what we like to do every year, but we had um, concert performances. We had a puppet show. We also had a costume contest. Um, we had bouncers. And it was a great way to bring the community out. And we had such a great and successful turnout. I mean, community members and people who just came out that heard about it and just were celebrating um, this event. And we got a lot of great feedback from the community and they were definitely looking forward to what was next. So we definitely set the bar for that. And then we moved on to um, for the month of November. So for no November, we had our amazing RPV <laughs> TV team and crew. <laughs> they brought us into the mix. <laughs> they did. They did. And um, we found it really, we're really unique in having our own in-house studio and team. 
um, that is able to um, really place Rancho Palos Verdes on a different level, on a mm -hmm. different platform. So we wanted to take that and take it to the next level and talk about a lot of these different events, I mean locations mm -hmm. that are his historical locations within right. the city. And we also wanted to highlight our council members, community members, and staff um, and talk a little bit about these significant locations and designations and as you're kind of learning about this location that you're visiting, you're also learning a little bit of pe a piece of history of Rancho Palos Verdes. And that definitely um, set the tone on members clicking and being a part of a tour without having to leave their house. So mm -hmm. from the comfort of their own home, they got to see and learn a little bit about the city's history. Right. So that was the month of November. Then December came along and we had our traditional tree lighting ceremony, which was fun and our second year of the ice skating rink. Um, but again, what set this one apart from the previous years, we had the jumpers, we had the brass band come out and perform, and it really started off the holiday season with cheer. Everything what you can imagine, it, it, it resembled that. So that was December, and now we're in January. Yes. yes. So you're thinking, <laughs> what are we doing for January? Well, January has been also very fun, and we've had several submissions, but it's the actual scavenger hunt with a twist. So what we've done, we've provided a 10-page um, list and images with a brief little hint of where the location is it, mm. where the location is. So if you would like to participate in this scavenger hunt, you have to go through every single box, read the two sentence or the one-liner mm -hmm. hint, and try to identify where that is in the city. Now we do provide hints because, <laughs> as I mentioned, in, no in uh, November we Publish, we published the RPV TV uh, City Walk and Talk, so they got to go back and watch those videos to learn where those locations are. Mm -hmm. So good. we have asked individuals to um, submit where they know the loca what locations are and or both. They can submit pictures of themselves at these locations, so selfies or family pictures. And what's great about this, it does involve the community, but also families mm -hmm. and getting people to come out and visit RPV and what makes us such an amazing city. So that is um, off to a great start. We've had numerous submissions. Um, our city manager, Adam Iranian, has also expanded that to city staff. So now <laughs> our city staff, you know, we're very competitive and we love a city that we you work think? in. So. <laughs> Um, I've been I, at all 10 locations. Yep. She, yep. she jumped on it right away. <laughs> it helps that I live in the city, but you know, give yourself a good hour because you're going to go from the east side to the all west side. Over. And it's the most beautiful trip around the city to get to all these landmarks. I mean, it's glorious. It's yeah. so fun. It, it makes is. you so grateful. Just doing that scavenge hunt, for me, it was, you know, We'll just give you one clue. It's like a big lighthouse. You might start there with your first self. <laughs> that's the only clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so we've had it was it was a blast. The administration mm -hmm. department, um, a handful of our staff members, uh, we were able to participate, and it was great. It was, it was fun. We got to go hang out together, take pictures, and laugh. But also, we got to exit the office for a little bit and, and <laughs> yeah. check out our beautiful city that we work in Absolutely. and some of us live in. So. Um, the January uh, 50th anniversary event, which marks number five, um, is drawing to the end. So if you haven't done so, get out there, look at the scavenger hunt form, complete every single one of those, submit a picture or responses, and the first 50 are going to get a prize. Ooh. So and we're not disclosing it just yet, but no, we're going to give. Do you qualify for the prize? I think because I'm a city yes. employee, we, I'm oh, in the mix. Yes. Sure, because wow. you're also a resident. Why not? <laughs> and I know we're talking about as we're wrapping up January because we're going to yeah. have lots uh -huh. more fun to talk right. about. But since we are talking about the scavenger hunt, to, to our viewers understand too, when you're saying there's there, the 10 locations, it's on the website, the yes. city's 50th anniversary website. That's right. Which is amazing. Which is rpv50.com. It's rpv50, the number 50.com. Dot dot Correct. Okay. And that's where you would go to sign up for the scavenger hunt, see the locations, the 10 locations and clues, right? That's right. That's because right. That's, and you're submitting online as well. People you're submitting are, online. People aren't coming by City Hall with photos. No, no but they're definitely sending them to um, the website. And it's we have um, a mobile uh, method in which you can access the web page. Yep. Yep. So we want to make it interactive where if it's in your pocket, take it out and kind of see what's follow going along. on with the city and follow along what's going on. And um, you'll always have it in your hand and accessible and be able to view all the different events that are that are going on. So if you haven't done so, download um, MyRPV and or visit the city's website at rpv50.com.
Very yes. good. And I know next month is an art contest. Tell in us February. about that. Yeah, February. Is we are definitely uh, have already started to promote the art contest. Okay. And that has already kicked off. We've already have had a handful of submissions. So it's they've been so far submitted by students on the peninsula, which is fantastic because we have such a artistic oh, group of huge. young community members yes. that are participating. But a little bit about the art contest, we have opened it up to RPV residents and K through 12 students that are students on the peninsula. So if you have had a project in school and you have told a, his a historical component of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, we ask you to submit those. Okay. But really what we're trying to do is having uh, have adults that are residents and or students that are K through 12 to submit artwork to commemorate um, the city's 50th anniversary. So we have a lighthouse. If you want to learn a little more about the, our house, visit the, the city uh, walk and talk to learn about that. But also, if you have a drawing and you've done you use watercolor or stencil uh, pencils, um, definitely use that as submission and, and turn it in through the city's website. And we do have additional information on if you're trying to figure out what to do, well, all that is available on rpv50.com. That's right. right. And what we are going to um, do with the art, you, once you submit it, those who have been selected will, the first prize winners, and we'll have one in each category. So we'll have the kindergarten through 8th, 9th through 12th, and then the adult submissions. So three first place uh, winners based on those three categories. Uh, their artwork will be displayed in the uh, Rancho Palos Verdes Recreational Activity Guide. Mm -hmm. So that'll be displayed um, there for the summer and the fall um, recreational guides. The second and third place winners will receive a 50th anniversary tote bag with souvenirs in oh, it. How so, fun. you know, we want to be able to encourage everyone to participate. And of course, the artwork will be displayed on the website and shared with the community. It's really fun. So to be clear, if you're 18 and older and you live on one of the other cities in the peninsula, you're just going to have to watch and enjoy, but get your kids to do it. Yep. Absolutely. Right? Yep. But I, I love it. That's right. And mm -hmm. there's so much talent in our community. There is. I have a feeling you're going to be getting a lot of submissions. Yep. Already, we've we've been promoting it for about a week now, and we're definitely getting a huge interest. Well, yeah. and there's going to be so many more events coming up all the way until September. I know there's, you know, well of a day, and we've in got, April. yeah, in April, and and every month there'll be something, and all of them will be on the website. Is that right? They're all on the website, and if you're interested in knowing what's coming up next, as you mentioned, so February is the art contest. Mm -hmm. Then for March, we have Celebrate the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve, and the city is going to collaborate with one of our partners, the um, Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, and putting together a nature walk and a small little reception at Del Cerro Park. Details to come on the date and whatnot. Okay. Then, as you mentioned, we have the Whale of the Day scheduled for mm -hmm. April. Okay. May is going to be a picnic at the Fourth City Tree Grove. And June, concerts in the park. Everyone loves concerts That's in the right. park. That's right. So come out here and get your boogie on. And then we have the grand Fourth of July celebration in July. Yes. In August, we will be hosting our Fourth Sister City celebration. And we are going to have some dignitaries coming out from oh. Sakuda City, Japan oh, that's gonna to be join so us. Exciting. It's going to be exciting. So Amazing. have them come out here. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to... Um, go off on the 12th event, which is the city's big 50th anniversary. The grand, finale. grand yes. finale. Which the official day is September 7th. Uh, 1973 is when we were incorporated, so mm -hmm. September 7th is our yep. 50th yep, official that's day. That's our 50th yes. official date. And that, yeah. and that big grand finale is going to be a party. Yep. And we're going to have a nice, beautiful um, event to bring, it all, bring all the events together. And we're going to extend it to the community businesses, but really just have everyone come in and celebrate all the all the great history that the city of Rancho Palos Verdes in, in, one, in one place. And you, before we go, you and your staff have just done an amazing, amazing job of putting all of these together. Just so much work, and they're all amazing. So Definitely, internal staff has been working very, very hard, the Recreation and Parks Department. Yes. Public works, administration, finance, community development. I mean, really, it's been a huge support system among one another. And what makes our, our community so strong is that you have a group of individuals that work for the city that love 
this city and yes. want to make sure that the, the residents come to these events or guests and really see the beauty behind the city and what we're doing. It's amazing. And of course, RPV TV will be talking about this all the way up until September. So mm -hmm. every month we'll have something new and exciting to talk about. So. We'll be covering the event. Yes. And I just can't push that website enough. You've done, yeah. your team's done a fantastic job mm -hmm. with that website, rpv50.com. You can find about all the events, the history of the city. There's just how to volunteer. You got it all there. Yep. And um, thanks for all yes. you're doing. Thanks for yeah, coming and hanging out you. with us today, too. All right. Well, right. we'll see you guys around. I'm going to I'm gonna get my, my artwork out. Yeah, we're already on it. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> the benefit of being an RPV resident. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for joining us. And uh, we have a lot more ahead here. Stay with us. And we're going to take you to PVIC to catch up with a tortoise and find out about whale watch season. Don't go away. We are back and Liz I know it's pretty much whale watching season here on the peninsula but you also had the opportunity to see the tortoise the very special turtle at PVIC and Carlos and I actually saw that same tortoise he's there every single day yeah the tortoise is named nomad and you know if this is about shining the spotlight like you're saying on the whales right now yeah since it's whale watch season and you know all creatures big and small but that tortoise and is he moves big. kind of fast for a for I guess yeah are, is a turtle and a tortoise the same thing no I asked him because I first okay. when I first saw That's nomad good. I was saying your tort I love your tor your turtle and he's like it's a tortoise in fact it's from West Africa he's a West African tortoise wow he's one of the biggest in the world he's huge um, according to his owner Mike he lives in San Pedro and I love the fact that he brings that tortoise every day every to the interpreter every day center. I know and they and they, they do a 1.9 mile walk um, or strut with the tortoise. It's pretty cool. Strutting with the tortoise all along that coastline, <laughs> right? And of course, everyone's there having a blast looking for the whales. And then and there comes Nomad, who's a star. And I think everybody has <laughs> taken a picture either with the, tur the tortoise or of him walking because you always see people stopping like, oh, wait, I got to get a photo. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so very <clears throat> unique. If you're ever down at the Interpretive Center, which we encourage everyone to come down, especially now to look for whales. Right. Um, Every now and then you'll see like, you know, a piece of lettuce because he walks with his bag full of produce, yes. right? That tortoise is very healthy, vegetarian. And he's very, <laughs> and he, he knows it's there too because you can see him going right for it. When, yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that he said that when he first got this tortoise because I thought, who has tortoise for a pet? Um, Mike does. He said his wife and him talked about getting a cat or dog but thought this would be really fun. And he, that tortoise, she, first she fit in his little pocket. Aww. And so now, now, now that... Tortoise is like the size of a watermelon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least, or bigger. But, you know, it goes to show you, you know, just the wonders of nature that are right there at the Interpretive so Center. True. And also, um, you know, the whale watch season hasn't gone, like, talking to the census takers that they're counting. The numbers are down. They were down last year as well. There's really no reason to understand it, but let's just hope well, that it's going to pick up. Which is interesting because you actually saw a couple of whales. I and did. that was amazing. Sometimes they sit out there all day and they never see a whale. So yeah, yeah. We, had, like, we saw a few blows mm -hmm. in the window of time that we were there. And, like, you know, unfortunately they don't call us on our cell phones to say they're passing by. Right. The Interpretive Center, which yeah. is really one of the most incredible places because of the way the Point Vicente you know, jetties out that you can see these, you know, it's peak season through May. You see them migrating up and down yes. our coastline. Well, Liz, I know that PVIC is closed right now or part of it. Tell us more yeah, about so that. So the Interpretive mm -hmm. Center Museum has been temporarily closed to the community since October due to a water pipe break. And the city is working so fast and Trying hard to, get it, back, to yeah. get it back up. It's certainly with whale of a day coming up in yes. April, we'll be there. Um, but it looks like was um, they're, they're looking for maybe a mid-March reopening for some of it. The gift shop, of course, is open there. We, yeah, of course. We love to go. Absolutely. But you know, the um, supervisor there is Emily Rodine, mm -hmm. um, the Point Vicente Interpreter Center Rodine, and we had a chance to catch up with her. That's right. And she'll uh, give us the latest on all, all of the, the fun info. happening at PVIC. Welcome to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. I'm Emily Rodine, and right now I'm here on our back patio where all the magic happens. As you can see behind me, we have the American Cetacean Society doing the annual gray whale census. This time of year is a great time of year to visit the Point Vicente Interpretive Center as we're in the middle of whale watch season, which runs through about the middle of May. Right now, most whales are migrating southbound down into the San Ignacio Lagoons in Mexico. The lagoon there is actually a World Heritage Site, and that's their breeding and birthing grounds in the warm lagoons just make it the ideal situation to go and visit. 
As you can see behind me, the American Cetacean Society Los Angeles chapter is conducting the annual gray whale census. They're a dedicated volunteer group that's not only trained but certified in spotting gray whales. They come out into the park grounds and monitor the ocean from sunrise to sunset daily. Here's some great tips when you're looking for whales here at the Interpretive Center. Bring a pair of binoculars if you have them, but oftentimes the whales are close enough that you can spot them with your plain eye. Sometimes you can even hear the blows from the cliffside, which is a quite amazing and unique experience. Keep an eye on the whale watchers. Once they're chanting and hooting and hollering, then you know they're seeing a whale. Other thing is just be patient. They spend the full day here hoping they see whales, and as much as we wish we knew they came by, we don't. So just have a little time on your hands, maybe have a picnic in a park, and just enjoy yourself. Even though our museum is temporarily closed, there's still plenty of fun to have at the Interpretive Center. Our gift shop's currently open daily from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can come check out the amazing native plant garden. One of the things that I would recommend, and one of my favorite things to check out, is the sea cliff buckwheat plant, as that is native habitat, and it's for the El Segundo blue butterfly, which is currently endangered. And it's most spotted during the summer months, but you gotta keep a close eye out because they only span about one inch across. So just take your time, look closely, and I'm sure you'll spot one. Without a doubt, one of the busiest days here here is whale of a day. Mark your calendars for Saturday, April 15th. We'll have all kinds of fun things for the community and families from whale watching on the cliffs, educational tours in the museum, face painting for kids, games, live entertainment, food trucks, and one of the crowd favorites is gonna be back, kettle corn. We also have a silent auction and raffle and plenty of fun to do. We hope to see you there. Visit whaleofaday.com for more information. One of the things we want to let the community know is that we are working on getting the museum open sometime in March. And one of the things we're most excited about is to introduce a new exhibit, a sperm whale jaw. A sperm whale jaw, it's remarkably stands at about 18 feet, so it'll be a great new centerpiece for the museum. So as I wrap it up here, I really wanted to say, take a hike. No, I really mean it. Check out one of our Los Serenos guided hikes in the Nature Preserve. You can visit www.losserenos.org for more information on the monthly hikes offered. As we wrap up, I really hope to see some of you down here. It's time for me to take a break and go spot some whales myself. Back to you, Liz and Maria. Emily is definitely amazing, and I hope she got to see some whales out there that day. I know. That's yeah. a great place to work, right? It is. She is part of our super-duper recreation and parks team that, you know, organize events like Whale of a Day. Unbelievable. And I'm um, oversee the Interpretive Center, and they also, I reckon, Parks Department oversee all the community classes that are being offered right now throughout the city. So many classes you can sign up for, and... Uh, yeah, I, we're, we're going to talk more about that. Yeah, and I know that quarterly, um, all the residents in RPV get sent out a newsletter, and it has everything about the classes, really right. from karate to uh, different exercise, hip-hop, and... I, you've taken some of those yoga classes, I, is that right? I have. I've taken some yoga. This is the guy that you were talking about, Maria. Yeah. I mean, this Pretty is cool. unbelievable. You can see all the different classes being offered, including yoga, yeah. um, which has been was fabulous. And, now, you're um, doing chair yoga, is that right? Yes, yeah, so I, I actually for the first time took a chair yoga class, um, which was a more of a workout than I was expecting, honestly. Yeah. Um, and it made me think about you because you um, have created your own exercise videos um, on how we can work out from a chair. Why do people think sitting down you can't get a good workout? I don't get it. Squeeze! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hold it out there. No, but it's true. I think that once you sort of commit yourself to any exercise program, it, you know, you you'll get results. So, right. Yeah. I know. Actually, what you had done with your video was, again, to incorporate anyone could get can get a workout from a chair. Yeah, absolutely. And really, people that need modified exercise, you need to sort of learn how to do the same thing a different way. And so I created that. But it's, it's again, it's the same thing. You did the yoga sitting down. You weren't sure it was going to be a workout. And lo and behold, she was sweating up a storm. Yes, yes, she really was. It was uh, really nice to see the um, variety of classes, like I said, the, and and the people in the yoga program, they were saying, you know, you have all ages, which is great. Yeah. And so what we'll do now is we're going to check in with Andrew Berg, who's a supervisor with the city's Rec and Parks Department. He oversees all the classes, and he's going to tell us more about how you can sign up. Uh, I'm Andrew Berg, a recreation supervisor with the City of Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Department here at Hess Park, where people walk through the doors every day to enjoy our uh, variety of recreation classes and programs. Uh, right now we've got a huge variety of classes um, for all ages, infant through older adults, uh, ranging from yoga, uh, karate, fitness, dance, music, art, cooking, uh, bridge, even dog training. 
New for 2023, we're excited to offer uh, two new bridge classes uh, for beginners that are brand new to the game, as well as beginners who know the game but are looking to improve. And we also have a couple of new yoga classes that we're excited to offer to the community. Our most popular classes are probably for the kids. Uh, we've got kids music and sports classes, uh, again, for infants and toddlers uh, all the way up through uh, middle school age. Those are really popular and almost always fill up all, all times of year. Uh, and also our adult yoga classes are really popular. We offer three different adult yoga classes for all levels and those uh, always fill up too. The prices for the classes vary. Um, some are as cheap as $50 for a session up to, you know, a couple hundred. It depends on the number of times the class meets, uh, the length of the class and the type of the class. Um, some classes will just meet for four uh, weekly for four weeks and some go for two to three months. So most of our classes happen here at Hess Park and at Ryan Park. Uh, here at Hess Park we have a lot of our indoor classes, so that's yoga, art, things like that. And at Ryan Park are our uh, outdoor sports and fitness classes. If you want to become an instructor and offer a class for us, you can contact the Recreation and Parks Department. You can give us a call, visit the website, or email us. Uh, we'll have you fill out a class proposal. Um, and we'll talk about what you want to offer, where you want to offer it, when you want to offer it, and hopefully it's a good fit for our class programs. And inhale up, look up, reach up, and then exhale lower all the way down. My name is Kathy Borgita, and I've uh, worked at various locations teaching exercise from aerobics, a step, uh, walking class with lifting weights and stretching, to um, yoga, a uh, little bit of Pilates, and but my passion is more with yoga, and uh, benefits the body in so many ways and all ways, and uh, from the body, the mind, the spirit, the everything. And I enjoy the people that I've worked with. I enjoy working for the city a lot. Um, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes is very supportive. Uh, to me as an instructor. I live in RPV, so that's a convenient uh, thing for me. At Hess Park, I teach chair yoga and a class called Yoga for You. The chair yoga, we also do some standing poses uh, because everyone who's been coming so far has the ability to stand and does walk into the class. Chair yoga, you have the opportunity to remain in the chair for the whole class. Uh, it's a choice. I am, you know, a fan of Kathy, our teacher. I love her, and I've taken yoga from her for a number of years. I took regular yoga, and then her chair yoga opened up, and I love it. It just gets me prepared, and we do all the right moves. I enjoy the class as, as Carol because I love Kathy. She's a really good teacher. And I started taking the class because Carol introduced me to the chair yoga. So I volunteered. It's fun to take it with someone you know. The easiest way to sign up for a class is to go online to the city's website. You can visit rpvca.gov slash parks and you'll see a link for class listings and registration. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you don't have internet access or you'd rather do it in person, you can come here to Hess Park and fill out a class registration form and pay with a check or credit card in person. Nilis, do you know how to play bridge? I don't. I was considering signing up. It looks complicated. Yeah, it always has. I think I would rather <laughs> be taking a class that works on like go fish. I mean, we are in a in a coastal community. Does oh, that make Liz, sense? That's that's brilliant. <laughs> that is yeah. that's the class. But but they're we'll excited. ask Andrew about that one. Yes, um, they're excited about that bridge class. So because it's a new offering, and it, you are, don't have to know anything about bridge. That's a nice thing. Okay. Well, I'm yeah. gonna have to look for a poker class. That's kind we'll of more my speed. We'll see if it's in the cards we'll for see. Maria going Ooh, forward. Ooh, very good, very good. <laughs> and remember, you can find out about all of the 50th anniversary and all the fun stuff going on in RPV at their amazing website, Liz at rpvca.gov that's right um, so check it out you can sign up for classes online and you can of course find all the fun events and also check out all the great shows that RPV TV is putting together for you to watch in 2023 make that your New Year's resolution <laughs> in fact I think that's a good one hang out watch great. more of us yes well it's always fun to be with you Maria and you I know well. I'll be seeing you around the city and participating in all these upcoming events that's right and uh, so let's have fun at RPV in 2023 I'm Liz Brown Swanson I'm Maria Sorreo and we'll see you next time Thank you.